Hey guys, welcome back to Below Subpar Content. Today I'll be discussing and reviewing a game called World Box, a god simulator where you have control over the entire world. I'm Ash, your host, and let's get into it. So if you're like me and want an idle simulation game that doesn't take up too much brain energy, World Box is the game for you. World Box is a game available both on Steam and on mobile devices, like Android and iOS. In it, you are presented with a blank canvas of creativity. Want to nuke your world? You can do it. Want to build a civilization from the ground up and then nuke your world? You can do it. The game features a variety of biomes, tiles, and creatures, so you have room to experiment and really have fun with the game. The simulation aspect has many parts to it, as there are a lot of game rules that you can change, like biome spread and kingdom laws. Villages and kingdoms are formed automatically when you place any of the three races, humans, dwarves, elves, or orcs, down in a suitable area. They will start construction of the village and put up tents around a campfire, the source of something called their culture. Their culture is upgraded over time as the village learns more about the world and allows for better buildings, bigger village borders, armor, tools, and more. There are also wars in this simulation game, but if you make the villages big enough, they can be insane. Some of the races might hate each other more than others, and races, when they're in wars with each other, will abolish the entire village, leaving no one alive, unlike same-race wars, which just seek to assimilate the villages into the larger kingdom. Of course, villages with better culture, that have more unlocks, like better weapons and tools, will do better in wars because they are stronger. Leaders can have specific personality types that make them more or less likely to seek war on each other, and villagers are more likely to seek war on each other if their borders are close and they have different cultures. Individuals within a race can also have specific traits, which can make them better or worse as uh, fighters in armies or just citizens overall. And by unlocking achievements, you can change these traits with the trait editor. So that's kind of the basics of cultures and villages, but let's go back to the actual world. There are several different biomes, like the forest biome and the desert biome, as well as several other normal ones. But there are actually a few mythical biomes as well, like the lemon biome and the crystal biome. There are also invasion-style enemies that spawn in hordes if you allow the game rule to spawn them. There are challenges for your civilizations to fight. There's also a natural disasters game rule where natural disasters will happen from time to time if you, of course, allow it. There are lots of other things in this game, but I think you should buy it and play it for yourself. Now for some of the nitpicks that I have with this game. So overall, I really love this game. Um, however, for the mobile version, which is the one that I play personally, you have to buy premium to get access to the entire game. So it's kind of limiting before that, although you still have access to humans and all of the kingdom culture stuff without premium. The game is still in the process of being worked on, so there will be many more features in the future. Also, it's kind of difficult to create kingdom borders where you want them. They just kind of expand on their own. But other than that, I don't have too many issues with this game. It's overall really amazing. 9 out of 10 would recommend. So as an end card, I'd just like to say that um, if you saw our latest video, the feature of the channel is going to be mostly animations and reviews uh, because that's just something that we found that we really like doing. So expect to see more of that on the channel soon. Uh, Hoplite and I will continue posting, hopefully more regularly, and we'll see you guys in the next one.